Welcome to Cowboys Rewind. I'm Britt Johnson. The Cowboys are kicking off week 11 in Kansas City to take on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, who are currently leading the NFL with 1,618 yards after the catch. This offense will definitely be challenging one for our Dallas Cowboys. Now the next challenge, the challenges get harder, but you're not going to get any easy opponents if you make it past 16, 17 games anyway, so that's okay. Um, but the next one it will be a little bit of a measuring stick for a defense, mm -hmm. I would think. Uh, what are your thoughts about playing them? I mean, they're extremely explosive. I mean, they have they have guys at every position that can get it done. Uh, you saw that last night. Uh, those guys can um, those guys can go. Um, I mean, the Mahomes, he's a, you know MVP candidate. Uh, you can see how he play, bounce back, and um, it's, it's crazy. Everybody, everybody seems to get their stuff together when they play in the Cowboys or before they play the Cowboys. But I mean, it's it's they're a great team. Um, like you know, I know they had a, sh a shaky start, but they're a great team and their defense is good. They got playmakers, so I mean, it's, like you said, it's going to be a good matchup. The, it seems to me that um, you know, complimentary football gets talked about all the time. It's what every team mm -hmm. since you first picked up a ball talks about. This team in particular, it seems to me that you guys play better when you get help from the other side of the ball. And it changes the way that the offense you're facing has to play. Mm -hmm. So I've been asked what happened against Denver. I said, well, I'll tell you what happened against Denver. They didn't get any help from the offense. If you look at how the game started against Denver, um, there was a sack. There was a tackle for a loss on the first possession. You guys went out and made some plays. But they then could, because the offense had a bad, it's rare bad day, Denver could go out and play however it wanted to play instead of you being able to know that they were one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you feel like it's just the nature of the sport now or something about the way this team is built that it seems like the better your offense plays, the better you guys play. I mean, when I think about it, like when I think about uh, complimentary football, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, every week basis. It can be, you know, sometimes the defense steps up, you know, a few weeks or, you know, or sometimes the offense steps up. And I feel like we have the pieces to, to do on both things, you know, on both sides of the ball. So, I mean, it could be one single game where we're playing amazing and then we help the offense and they help us and now their offense, the opposing offense is playing behind. Or it could be like a game in Minnesota where, you know, we start off slow on offense and defense and then one side says, okay, let's pick it up. And then, you know, that, so something like that. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, every single game or a weekly basis. It can be, you know, some stints where we play real good or some stints where they play real good. Will those yards after the catch determine who wins the game? We'll find out more when we return. Cowboys Rewind is brought to you by AT&T and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys currently have the number one scoring and number one total offense this season with an average of 32 points per game and over 430 total yards per game this season. But all the talk is former NFL MVP Patrick Mahomes and how his squad continues to yak it up. Actually, Dallas is ranked 31st right now in yards after catch. Uh, they are allowing 6.23 yards after each reception on average. Um, McCarthy says, he said in his press conference this morning, that Kansas City kills teams with their, uh, their yak, their yards after catch. Um, is this the most important stat for Dallas's defense this week? If we look at this stat at the end of the game, will it dictate who won this game? No. I mean, it's it's very important. Don't get me wrong. And it's it's been a problem. I haven't done the numbers since the bye week, but they gave up 27 in the first six weeks of the year. That speaks volumes. And it's still it's it, I think it's probably been better, but it still is a thing. And that's what these guys do. Like yeah. for all the 
we were just saying this during the break, like for all the worry about Tyreek Hill beating you over the top, how about Tyreek Hill stopping short, catching a 13 yard hitch, slipping his guy and going 28 more, mm-hmm. you know, that, that is what's terrifying, but that's not, what's going to decide this. I turnover margin. I know. I mean, that's basic, but Pat Mahomes loves to give you opportunities. He loves it. And it, it's worked out for him the vast majority of his career. He, he should have absolute confidence in himself. But, I mean, if, if they can get two or maybe even three, I mean, that's what's going to decide this game for me. Well, I, I mean, I, the way that Bucky was talking about it, too, whether the Cowboys play that, you know, uh, two safeties back like that. I haven't seen them do the much of that yeah. this year at all. Either way, though, the premise is going to be keep it keep him in front of you make him you know dump it off short and if it's third and 12 and the guy catches a screen and gets eight eight nine yards i mean yeah he's going to get 10 or 11 yards of, of yak but the punter's coming out so so if, you know what i mean if you can keep him in front I, sometimes that stat can be a little bit misleading if, if your goal is to keep everything in front and then go go up and make the tackle that is it's a really good point though jaron curse is he good. has lived in the box this season like they don't drop two safeties very often and that has flummoxed Mahomes all season. Like, that's kind of been the book on him. Keeping two back. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Gus Bradley's a cover three guy. He's got history in Seattle as well. And he just stubbornly ran cover three on Sunday night. And they murdered Destroyed him. Destroyed it. They murdered him. <laughs> Should let Rod call it. Yeah. I'm, he I, <laughs> he might have been, for all I know. It, it, it very much reminded me of a... We do what we do. Yeah. Game plan and the nameless, Chiefs, faceless opponent. The Chiefs were like, oh, "Awesome, thank you so much." <laughs> so, I and we know Dan Quinn has he he hasn't been that way. He's yeah. it's it hasn't been boilerplate. But I do. So I wonder if is it as easy as being like, "Well, we gotta we need to." Bat. Maybe this is a scenario where uh, we see more of the other guys. Maybe we see more of Malik Hooker this Hooker. week than we have yeah. because Hooker they ran Casey both back there. They need a yeah. guy in coverage, and uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that, but it's interesting to think about. The Cowboys had a big win this past week, and well, so did the Chiefs. But do they think they've officially gotten their mojo back? Stay tuned to find out. This segment was brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys seem to sweep out any bad energy from the previous loss to the Denver Broncos a few weeks ago and came into week 10 with something to prove. Now it's time to see if the Cowboys have what it takes to compete against a Chiefs squad that believes they've got their swagger back. Kels, these weeks are my favorite because, look, let's not kid ourselves. Kansas City has been circled on the schedule since it came out in May, but it's here now. Like, nobody's going to yell at us if we're talking about it. Nobody's going to say, stick to the game in front of you. (laughs) No, it's Cowboys Chiefs. It's going to be one of the biggest regular season games. On to Kansas City. And for that, We've got somebody with feet on the ground in Kansas City. Our friend Aaron Ladd from NBC41 up in Kansas City. What's up, man? Thanks for coming on. Hey, appreciate y'all having me on. We'll have some barbecue ready when y'all touch down here in KC. Oh, we've already picked out Oklahoma Joe's okay. is going to be happening. Are we officially. bringing Texas barbecue? Like, are we going to do a taste test? No, or? we don't have time for that argument, okay. but like we all know there are different types of barbecue and they're better for different things. Spoken like somebody who's lived in both places. She just refuses to pick a side. <laughs> So, Aaron, I, I want to I want to dive into it, man. And look, it's been a it's been a weird year for KC. You know, they, I mean, they've been used to being in the AFC title game, back to back Super Bowls. They're six and four now. It looks like they got back on track against the Raiders, but a lot of up and down results. So, just what what's the vibe in Kansas City balancing that frustration with such a big win heading into this game? Uh, it kind of looks like it, and it kind of feels like the Kansas City Chiefs are back on track after that dominant win on Sunday Night Football, 41-14 to win over the Raiders. And Travis Kelsey said it best post game. He feels like he got his swagger back. Kansas City kind of feels like they got their swagger back a little bit, especially on the offensive side of the ball. It wasn't looking as easy these last few weeks. The offense kind of grinding to a halt. The running game, uh, not the same with Clyde Edwards-Alaire on IR, but everything kind of came back together 
uh, in Vegas, and maybe they're feeling a little bit higher, anticipating a big time matchup now with your Dallas Cowboys coming in here to KC. Okay, Aaron, I've got to ask you though, because you did mention Clyde Edwards Alaire, which is my dear friend's. That's my guy. Tiger son. <laughs> and I want to know though, I'm hearing some rumblings that he could maybe be making his way back into the lineup. Like, how feasible is his return? And do you feel like he's the kind of guy that can just immediately jump back into the lineup and make it an impact? Well, it looks like this may be the week we, uh, the Chiefs get Clyde Edwards-Alaire back from that knee injury. Andy Reid spoke with reporters on Zoom yesterday and said it was, it was a stretch for him to play last week, but this week he probably has a pretty good chance to suit up. It's still going to be a committee, if you ask me. Darrell Williams flashed the hands and the feet against the Raiders, had a big touchdown catch to kind of give them a more comfortable lead over 100 yards receiving as well as what he did in the ground game. So no matter what CEH looks back, looks like in his return, I feel like we'll still see a heavy dose of Daryl Williams, as well as Derek Gore, who's a young upstart rookie for the Chiefs. Hey, Kels, do you know where Daryl Williams went to school? No, please tell it's me. It's an all-Tiger backfield in Kansas City. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. So many sons. Which, okay, look, everybody gets KC, Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, Tyree, like, we get it. I'm not trying to say it's boring, but you don't need anybody to tell you about that. What I'm curious about, Aaron, is this was a Chiefs defense that looked pretty rough for the first month or so of the season. <laughs> they get some takeaways against Las Vegas. It, it looks like they're maybe rounding into form, or am I exaggerating a little bit? No, you're definitely seeing what's right there. And we asked Andy Reid about this. It looked like they were going to be one of the worst defenses in NFL history through four weeks as far as points are allowed. But he credited his young guys for coming around. Nick Bolton, who was the first draft pick for Kansas City this year, a linebacker out of the University of Missouri, no bias there. He's come wrong in his maturity, as well as Willie Gay, a linebacker out of Mississippi State. And they've gotten healthy. Frank Clark, somebody who they're expecting to make big impacts around the defensive line. He's got a huge cap number that everybody here in Kansas City knows of and talks about, but he's made an impact ever since he's gotten healthy in these last few weeks. And they're coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. And as far as points are allowed, they've been doing a lot better job in these last four than they did in the previous four. The Kansas City Chiefs aren't the only ones who think they got their swagger back in week 10. We have more for you guys when we return. Our defense also got their swagger back. The Cowboys defense secured three interceptions against the Falcons last week. Former Cowboys ballers believe that if the boys can just slow down the Chiefs offense, then they will have a few opportunities to secure some turnovers. How would you come up with your scheme if you're Dan Quinn? And then I'll tell you what, what, what DeMarcus Ware had to say about that. Uh, number one thing that you have to stop and this is this is kind of opposite of, of what I usually say because it's usually the run. Mm -hmm. Play your regular run defense. This team has not been able yeah. to run, so you don't Wait, have is to your focus. Boy back? Is a uh, Hilaire? Is he? No, I'm, not sure. right, okay, I'm not right. sure. I'm not sure. It doesn't. But matter. even though I'm but just you, saying, but you, yeah. I'm saying you, you shouldn't have to put any extra resources yeah. to stopping the run. Okay. What you have to stop is the big play of Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. He has the opportunity to blow the game open at any time. We've seen games where he's had 200 yards in the first half because guys are getting beat over the top. That is not a way for you to uh, start the game. All right, so make sure that you slow him down. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey, you can put somebody on him, get some. Uh, make sure that uh, they tackle him right after uh, he catches it, stop the yards after catching, you'll be okay. But Tyreek Hill is that one guy where you say, look, if you give this guy opportunity to get going, then you you probably won't stop him for the rest of the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. You, you got to have people over top. You got to know where 10 is at all times. Because like you said, he can, he can make so many things happen just like that. You know, this team could be down and out, third and 18. You think you got them wrapped up. Mahomes extends the play a little bit. And then the whole game momentum shifts as he's able to connect with Hill, Hill on a deep pass. So you got to know where he is at all times. But with Kelsey, it's kind of hard, man, because he's the guy that moves the chains. He's mm -hmm. the guy that, get, you know, third and fives, third and eights, third and tens. He finds some way somehow to even beat double teams 
teams out there, and he moves the chains, and I think he keeps this offense going. You know, Hill's more of a one, you know, bang, he got a big play there. All right, you, you hold him down for a little bit, he'll hit you another big play in the second half. But with Kelsey, you got to find a way to to limit his action because he, I think he gives Mahomes that extra that extra juice, that extra confidence. All right, we, if all things break down, let me hit Kelsey for this. Let me hit Kelsey for that. So it's, it's tough. I definitely with you on the – you got to gotta hold down Hill for the most part because he's their big big threat guy. But you got to, you know, have some resources to Kelsey as well because he moves them chains and keeps his offense going. This is what I'll say. You watch the Kansas City tape and watch the games where Tyreek Hill is held in check and not able to get those mm-hmm. big plays. And you watch how much they struggle on offense versus – when he's able to get behind the defenses mm-hmm. and make those big plays, and you see him running for 40, 50 yards, they are a totally different team yeah. is, what, is what I'll and say. I'm, and what I'm saying, with the defense, they got to be patient. Absolutely. Because I don't think, you know, the, with, with Mahomes, with Andy Reid, they're like, man, we like, the, you know, big plays, big action. If you make them take a 10 to 12 to 14 play drive, they're going to get they're gonna get bored out there. And eventually, or what's his name, Mahomes is going to try to do something crazy and throw the ball, and he might turn it over. So if you're patient enough, you have a chance out there. But if you keep pressing to try to get a pick or try to get something going, that's when Hill gets over the top. or That's when Kelsey sneaks by on some extra catch yardage type stuff. So got to be patient with this offense for sure. Are the Dallas Cowboys the new standard when it comes to offenses? We'll find out next. The Kansas City Chiefs may have had the most elite offense in the league until now, and what better time for the Cowboys to show what they got than watching these two uncommon opponents go head to head? Feel the need to keep up with and put on your own show. Not necessarily put on our own show. Just going out there doing what we do, <clears throat> uh, make routine plays, make big plays if when needed and when called upon. Uh, I feel like we go in there. Don't really want to make the game bigger than what it really is. Uh, obviously, they have a great offense, They're very explosive, you know, very explosive players, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the matchup. Do you feel like they've been the standard kind of offensively in the league for the last two or three years, and now you guys are kind of making a claim that uh, look at you that you may be in that spot. Uh, yeah, it's safe to say that. I feel like I think we're the number one offense right now. Uh, that's a great state to have. Uh, you know, just got to keep building off of it to keep that, you know, that reputation. And uh, and by doing that, you got to go in and execute week in and week out. The things that AB said the other day to you all about y'all taking the shot, giving the, the best shot to everybody, can that carry over from week to week? Yes, it can. Uh, I feel like we're going to get everyone's best shot, and vice versa, we got to return a favor. They got to get our best shot. So I feel like. Uh, we play our best and they play our, their best. Uh, it's going to be a great matchup. You know, I'm excited for it. Uh, uncommon opponent. I've never seen, you know, I've never played against the Chiefs, so this will be my first time. Uh, away game. I'm excited for it. Obviously, you work with Dak and, and you're going to say he's the best quarterback in the league. But can you make the argument of how he's playing as well as any quarterback in the league right now? What he's doing? He's sensing the part. Uh, of course I'm going to say Dak's the best quarterback in the league. Why not? Uh, I mean, he's been doing he's been doing great uh, these past couple of years. Obviously, last year he only was limited to five games. But if you look at his numbers from the first first five games, he was leading a bunch. And uh, he's he's putting up great numbers this year. And uh, he's distributing the ball amongst a lot of us. And, uh, you know, we're he's keeping us all happy. Uh, Zeke's touching the ball. Uh, TP's doing the same thing. And, uh, you know, most importantly, he's – He's leading us, so I feel like with all that with all that being said, uh, great to have Dak, and uh, I'm I'm proud of him for this year. He's looking to keep it going. Can you uh, take us through what happened? You uh, had Buddy come on accident on the sideline. Have you ever done it before? Never done that before in my life. Uh, honestly, like in my mind, like if you look at the if you look at the video, in my mind, I took my helmet off. Like <laughs> I clicked the button right. And then I, it was, I don't know, that was crazy. I've never done that. Uh, I told him I apologized immediately after. I didn't, it was crazy. <laughs> did you realize it until afterwards? No, I realized it as soon as I did it. Like, my helmet is still on, you know? So I was like, dang, let me take this off and, uh, you know, apologize. But I'm glad he's all right. No concussion protocol, no nothing. So I'm sorry, fans. Uh, don't kill me. He, he, what did he say to you? What were his exact words? Uh, He's tough. That's exactly what he's told me. He, he said, he said, don't worry about it. I'm tough. 
All right, guys, you know what time it is. It is time for this week's Caption That. Before we get out of here, we got to check out our photo. Make sure if you want to be on Cowboys Rewind, you have to join Dallas Cowboys United Fan Club. Go to their Facebook, and you will see weekly of photos like this. This was the one for this week. They let you know. Leave a caption to be on this show. And then we picked our best one this week from Kelly Kitchen. And she said, get your helmet on. Here comes CD. If you guys don't know what she's referring to, he accidentally almost, you know, gave Dak Prescott a concussion. We don't want that to happen. So, yeah, CD comes, put your helmet on and get ready. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Cowboys Rewind. I'm Britt Johnson, and I'll check you guys next time. Cowboys Rewind was brought to you by AT&T, SWBC Mortgage. Join the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Visit swbcmortgage.com to find a pro today. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.